So I would like to welcome everybody. Um, we are here to discuss about the third year of the CSR school, which is imminently starting in the middle of June and to explain and give um, an overview of what is going to happen. Because basically um, the CSR school, for those of you who don't know it, it's something that you cannot really find anywhere else. Within um, a few weeks, you will be able to have a 360 approach of sustainability um, agenda from supply chain to financial issues, to commercial issues, to reporting, to what happens in Europe, governance, and so on. Now, some operational notes before we start and introduce um, the people that are here to discuss. This call will, uh, this discussion will last for approximately 30 minutes. I've already explained about the language. It will also be videotaped just for the purpose of the promotion of the CSR school in the social media. And if you have any comments or questions, please do text them. Otherwise, at the end, you will be able to join in and ask your question. Uh, Maria Alexiou, the, the chair of the BOD of CSRLAS is not here with us at the moment, but she will be joining a bit later on. So she will have the chance to take the floor as well. So let me start with the introduction of our participants. We've got four very special people with us today. And because everybody's talking about diversity, I must tell you, this is a 50 women, 50% 50 women, 50% men panel. But I will be a bit more traditional and I will start with the introduction of the ladies. We've got with us um, Miss Rania Asariotaki. She is the Sustainability Senior Manager of the American College of Greece, who is actually supporting and is a co-partner of this training scheme. So Rania, I would like to welcome you. We, we also have Poppy, Poppy Skagias. Um, she is representing uh, a company that most of the Greek people are very aware of. She's the marketing manager of Skag. Uh, for those of you my age or a bit older or even a bit younger, we've grown up, we've grown up with a lot of their products, especially the blue notebooks that we had throughout our school years. So Poppy, I would like to welcome you as well. Thank you. Thank you. And then we've got the scientific mind, um, the representative of the National University, Mr. Uh, Dr. Konstantin Manasakis. He's the assistant professor of economic analysis at the University of Crete. And this is um, also um, the main partner, the main university partner of the school. So Konstantin, I would like to welcome you as well. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. And last but not least, um, our partner in crime, Alexandros Kostopoulos, he's been here organizing and coordinating the school since the beginning of it, um, even when Konstantin came up with the idea uh, and discussed it with CSRLAS. His official title is the business development manager at CSRLAS, but he's actually the operational and coordination mind behind the school. So Alexandra, I would like to welcome you as well. Thanks, thank you. So let's start, actually, Alexandre, I will start with you. Um, let's start with putting all this project together. Um, it would be interesting because you've seen every part of it from the initiation of the idea to the design, to the implementation, all parts of, of this project. Do, are people interested in this? Do you wanna give us some data? Um, do we have an impact? Sure. Uh, at least this is the positive image. Uh, we think that uh, the school uh, has a, po a positive uh, impact. So uh, already counts more than 75 students uh, in the two years of its uh, implementation. Uh, with those in the second year being twice uh, as many as in the first year. Of course, uh, in this, uh, it should be counted that uh, in the first year there were five uh, focus topics, which became 12 in the second year. Uh, also, more than 15 expert professors have already uh, taught at the school and uh, an even larger number of about 20 uh, expert professionals have also contributed to the implementation of the modules in the first and the second year. Of course, this year, numbers that I mentioned before will be further expanded as, as new faces uh, are added uh, to both groups of uh, 
academic and expert uh, teachers, let's say. But beyond the numbers, the wealth of knowledge provided through uh, CSR school is truly a treasure, a real toolbox, a, a briefcase of knowledge, as shown mm -hmm. by, by the new art, the new graphic of the school that appears behind Rania. Um, thank you for this. And now I can see Costadinos right next to you because he's representing uh, not only the partner, but also an expert professor in all this. Do you want to share your experience with the professors coming from, from all the universities that participating um, in the last two and now the third year? Um, how do they react when we invite them? Honestly, now, the, the process of approaching teachers is itself a whole task. So uh, first, they need to understand the whole context, the whole concept, and the approach of building the school, the CSR school. And the, 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 then let's say that they look at potential competition issues, and it is normal within their, their other activities, with their other activities and occupations and, 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 and other tasks. However, the formulation of the partnership itself, meaning between a public and a private university with a business uh, organization that brings a more innovative approach to entrepreneurship, I mean CSRLS, plays an important role at the end in their decision. So with uh, this different approach, the school itself is structured. We emphasize in synthesis and partnership. And uh, I remind to, to all this, the SDG 17, so yes, there is a mm. impact. And we mix expert professors specializing in economics, in accounting, law, engineering, uh, social science, even psychologists, who all have one thing in common that deals with business issues, with modern business issues, such as responsibility and sustainability. Well, let me challenge you a bit though, because I represent the entrepreneurial world and the business world. And although I have great respect for universities and professors, and especially Constantinos, because I've seen what he's done for sustainability and how firmly he believes in it. We sometimes in the businesses feel that theory comes from universities and actual practice comes in the real world. Um, how was it the experience of, combina of combining experts from universities and then professionals, people that have loads of experience in this? Does this work? Uh, thanks, Tavrula, for this question. Uh, uh, essentially, our approach tries to serve the need of learners who come primarily for business sector, indeed, uh, for a fair ratio between theory and practice. So with the, uh, with the participation of uh, experienced staff and the support provided to the CSR school by the sponsor companies that they offer their executives, we can make this requirement a reality but the representatives do not come exclusively from, from, from companies, so, uh, but also from civil society organization, NGO, and, uh, and policy makers that create new trends or new obligate, obligatory frameworks, such as the European Investment Bank and the OECD that we, we uh, had with us in the first year, in the second year. But, uh, also from other also business uh, uh, initiatives that we want to introduce to learners in order to equip, to equip them with additional tools. Uh, in closing, I could say that each section of the school is like a small conference, you might say, if I might say. Uh, might say. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like an online conference because uh, uh, of the situation that we all experience, but at the same time, it reminds us of something from the, the familiar learning environment that we all went through some years ago. So it's a combination. Uh, what I can confirm is that every year I've got people from my team in the, in the school. And last year I had the toughest person from my team. She's very demanding. And I was really looking forward to finding out what she thought about it. So the, the feedback that she gave me was excellent. And I'm giving you in this in all honesty because I really challenged her. I said, well, does it worth it? I mean, because the reason I'm saying this, it's coming in the middle of the day, let's be honest. And for some people that might be a fallback and say, well, I cannot follow this. I need to devote three, four hours of my working day 
throughout some weeks. Uh, and it, it's tough sometimes, but she came back and said, well, it was worth it 100%. So thank you, Alexandre. Thank you for your feedback. Let me change and go to the university part of it. So Costadinia, I would like to ask you something in practice because we've got a, a very big agenda of all the thematic areas in the school. How do we actually uh, decide what we're going to put together? Why do we pick this and that? What's the logic behind it? Okay, thank you, Sabrina, for this uh, <clears throat> uh, quite challenging question because there is a whole background, uh, there is a whole mindset uh, behind the organization and the structure of uh, lectures and session of this uh, school. So the starting point is that um, an up-to-date uh, school for executives and advanced graduate students related to corporate responsibility and sustainability uh, needs, in order to be effective, it needs to be based on contemporary business practice and frameworks. So this is the starting point. And then we go to the second level of the analysis and uh, we have got two pillars. <clears throat> According to, to the first pillar, we took into account internationally followed uh, reporting frameworks, okay? We also took into account sectoral patterns of corporate behavior and practices related to sustainability and responsibility. And the third part of this first pillar has to do with uh, recent and uh, fruitful discussions uh, taking place at the EU level related to the EU sustainability standards about uh, reporting non-financial um, information. So the first pillar for organizing the structure and the sequence of uh, our lectures uh, is a, a contextual framework, which is based on uh, actually reporting frameworks. And then on, uh, on the set, we, we identified uh, uh, within uh, our discussions, uh, we identified a second pillar that drives our organization of uh, lecture, uh, which, uh, uh, which uh, has to do with, um, the, uh, with the practical implementation of the toolkits Mm -hmm. um, of uh, the toolkits offered in this school. So we have identified several core actors in the area of sustainability and uh, responsibility. And uh, we try to reverse engineer their informational needs and plan accordingly. And within this discussion, we, we identified investors, policymakers, business practitioners, executives, and these four groups of, uh, let's say, core actors uh, map the informational area where we need to intervene and uh, offer and transfer specific uh, knowledge uh, in, in, in the context of well-defined toolkits for its discrete lecture and uh, session and topic because but the school, the school is to you... grounded the school is based on 12 lectures its lecture constitute a csr related topic the topic is covered first by state of the art uh, scientific knowledge let's say by expert uh, university professors and then the second part uh, within this lecture slash topic is covered by expert uh, business practitioners uh, who have to mm. exhibit with us uh, good practices. But, um, a quick question listening to you. All this that you're um, explaining now might make people feel that listen to you. Well, I'm a, am I the right person to, to participate in this? Do we need do I need some kind of knowledge, some kind of standards? Can I just join even if I don't know anything? Do I join if I'm if I know a lot of things about CSR, but I want to be to update my knowledge? Um, is it for everybody? <clears throat> okay. 
Thank you for this uh, nice and uh, helpful question to, to just to, it, it helps us to, uh, to describe the, the whole mindset again behind this uh, partnership, behind this initiative. I would say that uh, we can uh, classify potential participants in several groups, but let's take two groups, those related to CSR and those not related, but who might be interested to, to, to join such a job market. Uh, let's take, uh, uh, let's take uh, the, the, the position of uh, someone uh, who is already in the, in the job market. What this uh, school offers is an update with state-of-the-art scientific and expert knowledge and at the same time state-of-the-art uh, knowledge over good practices. Okay, the, 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 the interesting thing about CSR is that nowadays it continuously evolves. Uh, CSR is a new ring within value chains. Mm -hmm. So we need to develop, uh, the, the, we need to establish tools uh, regarding the management of this new ring within a broader value chain. This is the main idea. And uh, for those not being familiar with this area, but they, however, are uh, interested to identify what is this whole discussion about sustainability and why has sustainability been part of business instead of being part of public policy solely and so on, I would say that this summer school uh, gives excellent opportunities uh, for those being interested to enter in this whole business world of uh, responsibility and uh, sustainability. And the interesting thing is that uh, uh, there are uh, ex executives being uh, in this, um, employed in this job market have not expert sustainability and responsibility backgrounds. As we say, he has got a strong background in economics. He has got a strong background in business administration. These topics are well established. Corporate responsibility and sustainability is something which is under current development. So we try our initiative, our partnership tries to contribute in the development and establishment of these toolkits that executives will find extremely useful during their career in this area. I can agree with you having a background. Uh, I don't know if it's a long background, but I've been in CSR and sustainability uh, for the last 15 years now. Um, I can tell you for sure, seeing it from a business perspective, that all this agenda is gaining exponential interest. That's right. It doesn't go like that. It goes like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the last two, three years, I can assure you for that. And I will share with you, and this is my last question as well. Sometimes I find myself in difficulty because of the work of the day to follow what's new. Mm -hmm. To follow, for example, the European Green Deal was announced and I was really running behind it, trying to understand what is the new agenda that it's, put, it's been put forward. Um, I'm doing sustainability reporting and I'm thinking, has anything changed? Uh, do we need to follow anything else? Um, new laws coming out. Or, things that are changing so quickly that sometimes I have difficulty in following. So my question is, do we have new topics this year? Do you just follow last year's agenda? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, this, uh, this year's uh, CSR school, the third uh, annual CSR school, uh, we, we, uh, we operate in the context of ESG, Environment, Society, Governance. So this year's uh, school uh, puts special attention to the society as a discrete pillar of the CSR uh, agenda. And uh, the, second, uh, the second contribution of this uh, year's school has to do with, uh, with uh, restricting our attention to well-defined and specific fields. For example, uh, we, we pay special attention and we devote a whole session about the legal aspects of CSR. 
Then another uh, core uh, topic of uh, this year's school has to do with responsible human resource management. We will also pay attention to the future of work as uh, another discrete uh, topic and uh, lecture uh, in this series of uh, 12 uh, lectures. And uh, another uh, very interesting, uh, from our point of view, topic is uh, how we link responsibility and sustainability to marketing. So how we use uh, practices, uh, outcomes, uh, and uh, responsibility and sustainability related corporate impact so as to feed our marketing campaign. Uh, so in this in this, uh, in, this, in this context, I would like to share with you now the 12 topics of, uh, our, of, uh, our this, uh, of our school this year. So we start with sustainable value creation. This is a core topic, how uh, value uh, is uh, upgraded from being a mainstream value, how we, we, we move from mainstream value creation towards sustainable and responsible value. <clears throat> and then how do we govern uh, sustainable organizations? So in the second step, we will discuss about sustainable corporate governance. And then we will see a specific part of, su of sustainable corporate governance, which has to do with the legal aspects of CSR, combining hard law issues with low with uh, soft law uh, issues and then we move towards uh, the the human uh, uh, resources part of this sustainable value creation uh, chain then uh, we will uh, devote a special topic about uh, sustainability and uh, responsibility driven marketing uh, climate change and energy transition, another well-specified uh, uh, and precise uh, toolbox of uh, recent uh, developments in, in this uh, area, which goes hand in hand with the circular business models, which is our seventh uh, topic. Supply, uh, sustainable supply chain management, which is also in this uh, spirit. And then we move uh, to two typical uh, issues from the society point of view about social capital, corporate relationships and stakeholder management. And uh, the second one is about ser servant uh, leadership towards responsibility and sustainability. Uh, our 11th stop uh, will have to do with sustainable finance and responsible banking. And in uh, following our earlier discussion, finance is uh, written again. Traditional finance uh, is, uh, will become obsolete in five to 10 years. So corporate finance is uh, upgraded, uh, incorporating issues from sustainability and uh, responsibility. And then our last uh, topic uh, has to do with the future of work. There is so much discussion about the future of work. Of work. This discussion is motivated uh, by uh, what uh, we experience in this COVID or post-COVID area. And uh, the second reason that motivates the discussion about the future of work is uh, the, the, the extent of digitization of work. So the future of work is a great challenge. And uh, this is the, the, the last topic. The context. Of, uh, hey, thank you for very much, Kostadin. I think you've given a full picture of what somebody can, can learn throughout the school. I would actually like to connect it with the experience from somebody um, that joined this. Actually, both Poppy and Rania have been co-students as they followed um, the school. So they will share their experience. Uh, Rania from a different point of view as well. But Poppy, let me start by asking you something. You, you, you represent a small medium uh, business, which is very different and has very different needs. For example, to a listed in the stock exchange market company like the one that I represent. So, um, do we have to, to see that in a different way? Do they, have, uh, do they need additional support in the education of sustainable management? Yes, definitely. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, uh, 
I have to say that following this program, these 12 uh, seminars, webinars, <clears throat> it was um, a thrilling experience for me. The reason is, first of all, I like to learn something new every day. Uh, the, the other thing is that we had 12 different topics uh, and each time we had a professor, a, a professor uh, either from Greece or abroad, giving us uh, their expertise uh, to topics that I've never heard, um, especially about sustainability. And small to medium uh, sized companies do not have this ability in Greece to, to get so close to knowledge especially now that we're talking about uh, responsibility, social responsibility and sustainability. And uh, it was, a, it was a, a great experience. First of all, because we, we, we came so close to new knowledge, new ideas, uh, professors from all over the world. Then they gave us, CSR uh, Hellas uh, gave us uh, really very important um, how do you say, um, um, bank knowledge. For example, they, they enter us into Harvard library. Uh, we could get, uh, we could read from there. We could uh, download some uh, new articles. Uh, we were uh, learning about uh, how other companies like Danone uh, is uh, dealing with issues about sustainability and learning about the circular economy, which I, I, I knew nothing about. And uh, really surprisingly, uh, the first lesson was in psychology, which I loved because my, my first degree is in psychology. I, I never expected to start uh, this topic from uh, uh, psychology, which was absolutely marvelous for me because I could relate so easily. And uh, uh, that's why the whole experience is an amazing experience for me. Uh, through the teachers, through the professors, uh, the colleagues. Uh, we were all professionals. We were all had the ability to talk, exchange ideas. Uh, most of the time we had some uh, um, labs that we had to cooperate together, three or four or two, and uh, give the idea and uh, present our case uh, to the rest of the uh, group and to the professors. Uh, they gave us the, the time to, to know about each other and to exchange ideas. And uh, it really, it was a, a, an excellent idea to, to join this. I'm, I'm very happy that I took it. And uh, uh, I'm a bit jealous <laughs> because there are, new, there are more new topics that I haven't le learned. So I would love to participate. We'll, have, we'll find a way to sneak in. <laughs> And uh, jumping without anybody yes. knowing. Especially to the topics that I'm not familiar with, I would love to. Uh, for example, the future... you'll give us a private, yes. private overview and we're going to have a private yes. discussion. You can't join. Especially so, the future of work. I, I never listen to this, which it's a new thing. Um, anyway, I have to thank you all. Uh, that was a great experience for us and for me personally. And uh, I'm here to, to, to see if you have a new uh, educational material for us to follow. Bobby, but Bobby, if you had, before moving to Rania, one last thing. If, you, if there were only two things um, that you would have to distinguish as noteworthy and you would have to share with us from all this experience in your training, what would it be? What would they be? The first, the most important thing is that uh, I, I gathered a lot of knowledge and then I can use it in our own firm. For example, the energy. The main issue for us right now as a SCAG is to uh, investigate and study what we can do with uh, resource management, uh, as, uh, energy. First of all, this is one topic that we have to take care of and have to readjust. And the second one is circular economy. Okay. I, I need to, to emphasize this and I, we need to uh, find out what we can do best. Circular economy, not many people know what it's really about, I'm telling you, because we, we're facing one of the things on the agenda that I'm sure a lot of people would be interested in. So thank you, for Poppy, for sharing this with us. Rania, thank I've you. been seeing you nodding um, throughout 
Poppy's, uh, you know, putting forward how she feels about it. So let me start with your experience because you've got two roles in this. One, you're representing um, uh, an organization who has a very long history because you're coming from a private academic institution that everybody knows. But before I ask you about the partnership, tell me your experience um, as, as, an, as a participant, as a student in this. Yeah, uh, I try to have um, a twofold role uh, because I was one of the organizers and dealing with logistics and the preparation of the school, but um, I also, in everyday life, I'm a practitioner. I practice sustainability uh, at the American College of Greece um, because uh, here at ACG we don't promote sustainability not only through our academic programs or academically, uh, which is our main business model, but we try to promote sustainability uh, operationally uh, and, of course, improve our social impact also and in the engagement of our community, uh, the students, the faculty, the staff, alumni, friends and business partners. Uh, we have a holistic approach as part of our strategy regarding sustainability. So it was an interest for me uh, to be a practitioner. And uh, this was an exercise because Costis has put a great idea and he has this scientific knowledge and Alexandros and myself, who are practitioners, we also try to uh, see it from another perspective, from the practitioner's perspective. As us practitioners, uh, what do we want to gain from such uh, an initiative, from this school? What topics do we need to learn? What are the issues we're dealing in everyday life? Uh, what areas do we need to improve? Uh, so this was a combination uh, of the scientific knowledge and theory uh, together with practice. And my noting was that uh, we are so, so glad that to hear from our participants' uh, point that what we are thinking and uh, are, uh, are correct and we are very happy that uh, we have people that uh, what you've given us is very meaningful and that we want to come back. Uh, so uh, our main goal was this, to have uh, a, an alumni network and people that uh, exchange of knowledge. Great. It's not something static. Um, personally, as a practitioner, I have been in other seminars and uh, online courses. Uh, what I'm amazed about is if you have attended CSR school number one, CSR school number two, they're not the same. <laughs> they're not the same topics. Maybe you see the same titles, but even the, the professors or the subtopics are not the same. It's, it's great to so, hear that. It's so great. as Costis explained, sorry, as mentioned, it's, it's this with uh, CSR number three, CSR school number three. So we follow the current trends and the necessity of the market and we try to offer to our fellow professionals because our participants are fellow professionals, uh, the necessary skills to cope with everyday issues, challenges and tasks. Rania, I said that it's great that you're saying that because uh, I feel that a lot of people joining the CSR school coming from this field, or at least pretty much around the CSR and sustainability team. But I actually suggested to my team this year that this is a great school for professionals from different organizational parts in the company, from the finance or from the uh, supply or from the HR, because it gives them a 360 overview of what sustainability is all about. So even if they do not follow this, as a job title, it's a definite skill that they will need for the future job because it puts a perspective into what they're doing into the new world that is coming around. So mm -hmm. I can see that it, it, it gains a lot of interest wherever you come from a different part of the company. And my last question for today has to do with your 
different hat now. So I ask you now as a representative, as I said earlier, of an academic institution um, privately, and what were you thinking when you decided to partner? Because in Greece, we've seen, although I'm a firm believer in partnerships, that putting together the public and the private sector and a, a business organization and so on, it's not very easy. Um, so what were you thinking? Uh, well, um, of course, the first, um, point that uh, made us uh, believe in this initiative and being engaged uh, to be engaged with this initiative and be part of this group um, it was first of all our um, goal and strategy to provide as an, as an academic institution our main goal is to provide quality education at all ages from high school to executive de development to professionals uh, so this was our main uh, point. The second point is that uh, we are firm believers that uh, no person can do it all, no one can act alone. Uh, we try to uh, infuse that inside the organization. Um, uh, so it was something unique, but not only the collaboration between the private and the public sector, uh, it is that two institutions in Greece, the private educational institutions, because, because we have another issue that private educational institutions cannot collaborate and on the same project with uh, a public university, public institution. Uh, so uh, this was a case study for us. Um, after 2000, from 2019 until today, we say that um, it is an excellent collaboration and uh, for us is a, a case study for a collaboration. Um, we, are, we try to promote all SDGs, so SDG 17 collaborations are <laughs> together with SDG 4, our number one priorities. Um, and everyone, another trigger is that everyone brings of their own skills and perspectives and knowledge. Um, the uh, Alexandros for CSR Alas uh, brings their own perspectives and their own ideas and skills. Uh, Constantinos has the scientific part, he's the scientific mind. Uh, we bring another perspective. So um, I wouldn't do it any other way. I, I, did, I wouldn't dream that this could work in any other way. <laughs> so... Um, Thank you, Rania, for, for sharing this with us. We are, um, great. We are very much advocate and uh, we hope that we will do, we'll continue to do it for many, many years ahead. <laughs> We're definitely going to do it for many years. It's, as Alexandra said, the interest is, um, is becoming larger and larger every year. So I would like at this point to thank you all for having this great discussion. But before um, I close, I don't see any comments at the moment in the text. Um, I'll give you a few minutes. And in the meantime, I've seen that Maria Alexiou has joined um, our discussion. Uh, as I said earlier, everybody knows who Maria is. But for the record, she's the chair of the BOD of CSR Las. She's a member. Uh, she's a member of the CSR Europe Board, and in her everyday life, she's also the senior ESG advisor for the Titan Cement Company. So, Maria, the the floor is yours. Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, 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 allow me to ask you to excuse my, let's say, absence from the meeting, at least visually. I am currently in a transition phase, as we are all, in terms of corporations and institutions. Um, that's why I would uh, ask you to excuse for not opening my, uh, my video. I am trying to join another call soon that is going to discuss uh, the integration of sustainability topics in the board uh, agenda. So what we are discussing already for the school, the third cycle of this school that really makes us really proud 
not only myself, but all the members of the board and of course Avrula, who is leading our efforts in respect to SDG4 and education, we truly trust that um, it's all about education. We cannot change our culture, we cannot change our organizations, either small or big, either listed or not listed, uh, but also our own uh, behavior as uh, citizens and as consumers and as employees, as parents as well, allow me to say, if we don't understand that, um, um, first of all, um, we all uh, uh, do this together, we have all to achieve a more sustainable future together, and we are all very valuable resources or capitals, whatever you call it, in this re real uh, tremendous effort. We have 10 years in front of us to achieve something that may sound utopic. I think one thing that we have heard is that the CSR school opens our minds, makes us see things that even if we love as a science like psychology, we have never realized how much useful it is to make some kind of decisions in our everyday life as managers, as employees. We are all faced with such decisions in our uh, daily life that is really amazing to have something that we have co-created with the passion of the people involved, allow me to say, both Constantinos, Rania, the whole team from um, the American um, college, but the whole team on CSR is, uh, alas, is trusting that this is the right way to go. So congratulations. Thank you for all the courage and the inspiration you give us. And we will try every year to make it even more worth it because that's also the way we cre create value together. We make an impact and this is how we create value together. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Maria, and thank you for your comments and for leading the way into all this. Um, so, actually, I think we can close this discussion here. I don't see any comment. I, I, if somebody wants to comment, um, you can raise your hand. I haven't seen anybody that needs to, to share something with us. So, with that, actually, I would like, Alexandros, if you can just tell us the practicalities. So, when is the CSR school happening and how can somebody join? Do they have to go online? Um, is it starting in the middle of June? Just um, to close with a practical um, agenda. Avrula will uh, break the protocol and I will ask uh, Ariadne, my partner in this crime, <laughs> to join us. And uh, everything is in the three w dot csr school dot eu. But please, Ariadne, can, can you share with us some, some more Hello, oh, hello from me as well. Um, I will just send you the link to start with in the chat where you will find all the information discussed today. Um, so registrations are available till the beginning of the program, so the 15th of June, but we do have early bird registrations and early bird, you know, at a reduced fee till the 31st, which is this coming Monday. But as so all Greeks, we will have to do that. that last minute. But anyway, yes. sorry, I, I couldn't help myself. I had to. I had to say that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the the discount, the bargain is for four more days. So if you can manage that, that would be a great benefit for everyone. There are different um, categories of registrants. Whether you're a student, a professional from CSR LASP who get an extra discount or just a professional from any other company interested, you will find it all on the link I sent you. And I think that's everything okay. regarding registration. Thank you, Ariadne, for joining in. So with that, I would like to thank you, um, Rania, thank you, Poppy, thank you, Costadine, and Alexandre, and Maria, of course, yourself, and everybody who joined uh, today. Uh, we hope to see you all in the CSR school and have a uh, great afternoon to everyone. So goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.